Hey, what's going on guys? So I've released my third Udemy course called Node.js Express and MongoDB Dev to Deployment. And I wanted to introduce it and give you guys a promo code to get the $50 course for just 15 bucks. So it's in the process of being reviewed by Udemy, but if you're watching this video, it's already released and there's a li uh, promo link in the description. Now I created this course because there's not too many tutorials or courses that really show how to create a Node.js Express app from absolute scratch and then go all the way up to deploying to the web with a domain name. So what we're doing here is we're going to go in depth in building two applications, which will show you, I'll show you in a second. Um, but we're going to start from scratch where we don't even have Node.js installed. We're going to go through the entire process of building them and then we're going to deploy them to Heroku. We're going to deploy a remote MongoDB database and we're going to add the domain name. Now this is a learn by example course, meaning that we're going to this whole course is based on building projects. It's not going to be, you know, a bunch of boring slides or anything like that. But I will be explaining all the concepts, every line of code that I write and what's going on at the same time. So it's not going to be like a code along. Now, many of you may have seen um, some of my 10 project courses, but the difference between those and this is that in a 10 project course, you can't really you can't really get in depth because you need to build 10 projects in a certain amount of time and you can't really. Um, you know, explain every line of code, you can't deploy every single project. So my goal for this course was to just build two projects, but go much more in depth. And you can see this is an eight and a half hour long course. So it's it's almost the same length as a 10 project course. All right now. Uh, and of course, I'm not bashing those 10 project courses either. Those are great for, you know, if you want to learn a lot of different technologies, you know, just the, the very the basics um, in, a, in a quick amount of time. So I did try to make this course for all skill levels. Um, I tried to explain things well enough so that if you just know basic JavaScript, you can learn and you can follow along. But at the same time, if you've worked with Node.js before, you'll still learn a bunch of stuff and have a good time doing it. I think the Google OAuth integration in the second project is really valuable, as well as um, Bcrypt hashing, Handlebars JS with helper functions, Mongoose models, and much more. All right, we'll also be using ES6 syntax like arrow functions, promises, and so on. So what I want to do now is just take a look at the applications we'll be building and go through them real quick. Now, the first one is called VidJot, and it's basically, this is an introductory project because I wanted to make this project uh, very friendly to beginners that have not even used Node.js and Express before. I took the time to really explain routing and um, templating and things like that. So basically, it's a, it's an application where YouTube or content creators can come and just register for an account and then they can jot down their ideas for their next videos. All right. So we're using Passport JS here with a local strategy. We'll be hashing our passwords and we'll store our credentials in our database. We're going to start off with a local database, a local MongoDB database. And then when we deploy, we'll be moving it to MLab. Um, which is a remote MongoDB hosting service. And then we'll push the application to Heroku. All right, so what we would do is just register. So we have a simple register page. Uh, we're using uh, uh, HTML5 um, form validation, but we're also using server side validation as well. So let's create an account. We'll say Steve Smith and we'll give him an, uh, an address of Steve at yahoo.com. And you'll see if I try to put like a two character password and I don't match them, we'll get uh, we'll get our errors here. Passwords don't match. Password must be at least four characters. So we're taking the time to do some simple things like validation. Uh, we're also making it so that you can't register the same email, just things like that. OK, so let's go ahead and just add a password here and submit. And now it says we're registered and we can log in. OK, we're also using something called express messages that will allow us to use these flash messages. So we'll go ahead and log in with Steve at Yahoo. And we have our ideas page. And once we log in, you have access to this drop down here where we can list our ideas and we can add a new one. So let's say we wanted to add a JavaScript crash course and we'll say basic 
video on JS. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And we'll submit. And you see we get video idea added and we have our crash course listed. Okay, so we can edit this. Now we also made it so that if you're if you're logged in as another user and you try to edit someone's uh, idea, you try to go to their URL, you're going to get booted out. So no one else has access to uh, to your ideas. Okay, and then of course we can delete. Now on the surface, this is a very simple application, but we really went over things like like structuring our files and folders. Um, you know, making sure that e email addresses couldn't be registered twice, um, authentication, access control, things like that. Okay, you also notice we're using Bootstrap 4 for our UI. All right, we can go ahead and log out. And that's our first application. Now, the second one is much more in depth and much more advanced. So, Storybooks is a it's basically a social network where we can create stories and we can either share them. We can label them as public or private where it's more like a diary. So only you have access to your stories and we're using Google OAuth for this project. So you can authenticate with your Google account. All right. And you'll see that we're using materialized CSS. We have a little slide out menu here. All you can do if you're not authenticated is view the public stories. All right, so these are public stories. You'll see that each one is tied to a user and this is their actual Google name, Google, whatever they have as their first name and last name and whatever their avatar is. All right, and if we click read more, it'll take us to that story. Notice that we can have comments. The user can actually choose if they want comments or not on their stories. I believe this one here. Yeah, this one here has a comment on it. And then it also has the author information over here and you can click here and you can see all the stories from that specific user. If you notice the URL, it's stories slash user slash and then the user's ID. So we did uh, a little bit with relationships between stories and users in MongoDB. All right, so let's go ahead and authenticate. Now I have multiple Google accounts, so I'm just going to choose this one here. And I already I have already authenticated before and you can see I have a bunch of stories. This is the dashboard area and you can see I have uh, two public stories and a private. The private one will not be displayed anywhere on the site unless I'm logged in. I'm the only one that can see this this page right here. All right. We can also edit our stories from here. Um, we can choose public, private or unpublished. We can choose to allow comments or not. And we have this editor for our actual story. We can also delete our stories, of course. And if we go to our little slide out menu here, now you'll see we can actually view my stories. So this is just stories from this account. Um, notice we have the little edit icon. And even if we go to the public stories page, you'll see that any story that belongs to us actually has an edit icon. All right. And if we look at the story itself, it also has an edit icon and we can leave. Um, let's leave a comment. Let's go right here so we can leave a comment. We'll say great post and submit and you'll see the comment will get added and it also has the user's avatar name here and you can click on that and it'll show that user stories. All right. So this one is a little more in depth, especially when it comes to like access control and stuff like that. Uh, and like I said, the Google OAuth is is real valuable um, learning how to create our keys in the Google console and then implementing them um, for our dev development, our dev environment and then in our production environment, because basically you don't want to put your keys inside of a file on your server. What we did is if we go to our Heroku dashboard and we go to our application for storybooks, you'll see it has all the latest activity, all the latest pushes. Uh, but if we go to settings and we go to our variables, you can see this is where we have the Google client ID and secret, our MongoDB URL, things like that. OK, so this is stuff that would not be in, uh, you know, a basic Node Express tutorial. So you're going to learn a lot. And I think you'll really enjoy it. And you can see we have our, our MLab. This has the different databases um, for our storybooks. We actually used uh, MLab for our dev and production database for vidjot. We used a local database for development and then used uh, MLab for production. So that's it, guys. I just wanted to mention that uh, if you want to get this course for 15 bucks, just go ahead and click the link in the description. And thanks for watching.